lesson is the second part in a lesson on linear demand equations. In this video lesson, we're going to look at the same equation as we did in our first lesson. However, today we're going to talk about the factors that can cause a change in the A variable in our demand equation. You'll recall that the A variable refers to the autonomous level of demand or the Q intercept of the demand curve. As we saw in our last lesson, a change in the price of a good causes a movement along the demand curve and a change in the quantity demanded. This is the P variable in our demand equation. As we, as we see here in the market for pizzas, an increase in the price of pizzas from $2 will cause a movement along the demand curve and a change in the quantity demanded from 680 pizzas to at a price of $4, 560 pizzas. This is simply a movement along the demand curve caused by a change in the P variable or the price of pizzas. Next, however, we wish to know factors that might cause a change in the A variable and thereby cause an actual shift in the demand curve. If you recall from a previous lesson, a change in the non-price determinant of demand for a good can cause the demand curve for that good to shift. These include tastes and preferences, prices of other related goods, and so on. So let's do an example here. Let's say that a close substitute for pizzas is hamburgers. And let's assume that the price of hamburgers, we'll call that pH, decreases. If the price of hamburgers decreases, we would assume that the demand for pizzas would decrease. And therefore, the A variable in our demand for pizza equation will decrease. So with a fall in the price of a substitute good, the demand for pizzas will decrease, and this will cause a decrease in the A variable. In other words, what used to be 800 pizzas demanded at a price of zero will now fall. Let's assume that the new demand for pizzas is expressed as QD equals 600 minus 60P. This indicates that our demand curve now begins at a Q intercept of 600 instead of the previous level of demand at a price of zero, which was 800. Pizzas are now cheaper. Hamburgers are now cheaper. Therefore, people demand fewer pizzas, the substitute. Notice, however, that the, notice that while the A variable changes, it decreases from 800 to 600. Our B variable remains the same. So our Q intercept has changed. Graphically, the decrease in the demand for pizzas will be illustrated as a leftward shift in the demand curve. The Q intercept, in other words, the quantity demanded at a price of zero is now 600 pizzas, yet the slope of the demand curve will remain the same as it was before the fall in the price of hamburgers. Our demand curve now slopes upwards so that at a price of $10, zero pizzas are demanded. Notice that the entire demand curve is shifted to the left following a decrease in the price of a substitute good. We can use this new demand equation to plot a new demand schedule. So let's look at the schedule on the right and we'll come up with a new demand schedule for pizzas. At our new demand schedule, we'll see that our new Q intercept or the quantity demanded at a price of zero is 600 pizzas. As we plug in the different prices in our demand schedule, into this table, we'll see that the quantity demanded for pizzas will decrease as the price of pizzas increases, and it will continue to decrease at the same rate at it, as it did before the decrease in demand. So here we see that the new demand for pizzas is simply to the left of the original demand for pizzas following the decrease in the price of hamburgers. As the price decreases, as the price increases, the quantity demanded decreases at the same rate that it did before. In other words, our B variable, negative 60, has remained the same as it did before. For every $1 increase in the price, the quantity demanded falls by 60 pizzas, and for every $2 increase in the price, the quantity demanded falls by 120 pizzas. Only our A variable has changed. The lower price of a substitute good caused the autonomous level of demand or the quantity demanded at a price of zero to decrease. Even if pizzas were free, fewer people would demand pizzas now. 600 pizzas would be demanded at the price of zero and the quantity demanded would fall as the price rose from zero dollars to ten dollars. Our demand curve is shifted but the slope remains the same. 
the demand for pizzas is determined by non-price determinants of demand. A change in the price causes a movement along the demand curve, but a change in a non-price determinant of demand will cause the entire demand curve to shift. Notice, however, that at each price, the quantity demanded is now exactly 200 units less than it was before the price of of the substitute good declined. Whereas at the previous level of demand, at a price of $2, 680 pizzas would have been demanded. Now only 480 pizzas would be demanded. At a price of $8, 320 pizzas used to be demanded, but now the demand has decreased, only 120 pizzas are demanded. So what are the factors that can cause the demand for a good to change, such as we have seen here? You'll recall from an earlier lesson that the determinants of demand, the non-price of determinants of demand, the non-price determinants of demand can be summarized using the acronym TOEISS, Tastes and Preferences of Consumers, Other Related Goods, Prices Including Complements and Substitutes, The Expectations of Consumers of the Good, to future prices and future incomes and the current incomes of consumers. For normal goods, there is a direct relationship between income and demand. For inferior goods, that relationship is inverse. The size of the market refers to the number of consumers in the market and there are special circumstances which can, which can cause a demand to shift for a particular good. These six factors are what we call the determinants of demand or the demand shifters and we can see now why a change in a non-price determinant of demand, such as the price of a related good, will shift the demand curve. The demand will shift because the A variable in our demand equation will change if any of these factors change. So a change in a non-price determinant of demand will cause the A variable to change. But you should also recognize that the B variable will not necessarily change when a determinant of demand changes. In other words, the, sl the slope of our demand curve can remain the same even as the demand curve shifts outwards or inwards. The B variable will shift if some other factors change. In the next part of this video, we're going to explain the factors that can cause a change in the B variable. In this part of the lesson, we're going to look closely at the B variable in a linear demand equation. Recall that the B variable is an indicator of the slope of demand. The B variable has a negative sign in front of it. This is because the slope of a demand curve will always be negative. There will always exist an inverse relationship between the price of a good and the quantity demanded. We have two demand equations here both with the same B variable. Therefore, both demand curves have the same slope. Next, we're going to talk about things that can cause a change in the B variable and show how a change in the B variable would affect the demand curve. First, examine the two demand curves we already have. Our original demand curve expressed the demand for pizzas as QD equals 800 minus 60P. The Q-intercept of 800 indicated that at a price of zero, if pizzas were free, 800 pizzas would be demanded. However, following a decrease in the price of a closed substitute, hamburgers, the demand for pizzas decreased and the new Q-intercept was now 600, meaning that even if they were free, only 600 pizzas would be demanded. Notice, however, that the B variables in our two demand equations remain the same. This means that the responsiveness of consumers to price changes did not change when the demand decreased. 60 fewer pizzas would be demanded as the price rose by $1 in both the original and the new demand equations. So what factors could cause a change in the B variable or a change in the slope of a demand curve? You'll recall from a previous section of this course that there is a concept called elasticity, which refers to the responsiveness of consumers to price changes. One of the factors, one of the most important factors that determines the elasticity of demand for a good is the number of substitutes. So let's assume, for example, that the number of hamburger stands in a particular town decreases and now there are only pizza stands to choose from. If this were to happen we would assume that pizza consumers would become less responsive to changes in the price of pizzas. So if the number of substitutes decreases then we would expect the B variable in our demand equation to decrease. Consumers would be less responsive. For every one dollar increase in price they would consume not 60 fewer pizzas but some smaller decrease in the quantity demanded of pizzas. Let's say that instead of 60 fewer pizzas, for every $1 increase in price, consumers now demand 30 fewer pizzas. We have a new demand equation 
of QD equals 80, that should be 800, minus 30P instead of the original minus 60P. If we plot this on a new demand schedule, we will have a whole new demand curve. Let's say that the price of pizzas is zero. We'll see that the Q intercept remains at 800 pizzas. However, as the price increases from $0 to $10, the responsiveness of consumers will be less responsive than it was when the demand equation was 800 minus 60p. So we have a quantity demanded of 800 at a price of zero, but now a $2 increase in price, whereas it used to lead to a decrease in quantity of 120 pizzas, will now only lead to a decrease in the quantity by 60 pizzas. 800 minus 30 times the price of 2 gives us a new quantity demanded of 740. Consumers are less responsive than they were before. There are fewer substitutes, therefore the $2 increase in price scares away fewer consumers than it did before. As the price rises, we see that the quantity demanded continues to fall, but it is falling at a slower rate than it was following the change in the demand resulting from the decrease in the number of substitutes. So we actually have a new demand schedule now where the increase in price from zero to ten dollars causes the quantity demanded to fall from 800 pizzas to only 500 pizzas. This compares to our original demand curve in which the quantity demanded fell as low as 200 pizzas when the price rose to ten dollars. Consumers have become less responsive to the higher prices of pizza due to the decrease in the number of substitutes available. In other words, demand is more inelastic for pizzas. This is illustrated as a decrease in the B variable. So there's our original demand curve. We saw that as the price rose from $2 to $4, the quantity demanded fell from 680 to 560 pizzas. But if we plot our new demand curve, Using the new demand schedule based on the decrease in the B variable from 60 to 30, we should see that the demand curve becomes steeper. Our Q intercept remains the same at 800 pizzas, but as the price rises, consumers are less responsive than they were before. Therefore, the demand curve does not slope like it did before. Rather, it slopes more steeply. We'll plot a couple of points here and we'll show our new demand curve following the decrease in the elasticity of demand. Notice that at $10, now 500 pizzas are demanded, whereas before only 200 pizzas were demanded. If we connect these dots, we have our new demand curve. Notice that it is steeper, indicating an increased inelasticity of demand for pizzas. Due to the fewer number of substitutes, people are less responsive to the higher prices of pizzas. Before, consumers bought 60 fewer pizzas for every $1 increase in price. Now consumers will only buy 30 fewer pizzas for every $1 increase in price. The B variable is an indicator of the responsiveness of consumers to price changes. If the B variable declines, we see that consumers are less responsive to price changes. They will continue to buy fewer pizzas as the price rises, but the rate at which their demand falls is less than before. So this wraps up our lesson on the determinants of demand. These are the different factors that change the demand for a good. Not just the quantity demanded, but can actually shift the demand curve left, right, or change the slope of demand by changing the elasticity of consumers.